PD, Chapter 24. Early in the afternoon, the group arrived at the trailhead below Palisades Falls. I'm so hungry my big guts are eating my little guts, Calvin announced. Then let's eat, said Trevor, laughing. After eating their packed lunches, they began their expedition up the one-mile trail. While Boyd helped Calvin work his chair up the steep path, Trevor tried pushing Petey, then decided to use a rope. He tied one end around the frame. While Shauna pushed, Trevor pulled on the rope. Twice they met other hikers who stared at their strange convoy, but greeted them warmly. Approaching the falls, Trevor hunkered down for the pull up the last steep section. Perhaps he pulled upward too hard, or Shauna pushed down. But in any case, suddenly Petey's wheelchair tipped over backward. With the chair resting on the hand grips, Shauna shouted, Help me, Trevor! Petey hung backwards, held in the wheelchair by Shauna's head and shoulder. Boyd couldn't help. He was holding Calvin on the steep incline. Trevor struggled to grab the frame. With a hard jerk, he tipped the wheelchair upright on top of himself. They began sliding down the path. Shauna dragged her feet while Trevor held on underneath for dear life, scraping along on his rear end. All the while, Petey laughed and squealed. Oh, boy! Oh, boy! When they finally skidded to a stop, Trevor gasped with relief. Shauna broke into laughter. You two are an accident waiting to happen. Trevor scrambled to his feet. No way are we going to let a teeny little hill beat us, huh, Petey? Aye, Petey squealed. Boyd, who had reached the top with Calvin, locked the brakes and returned to help. Remind me to wear a helmet when I walk with you guys, he laughed, sweating. Soon Petey rested near Cal beside Calvin near the falls. As everyone caught their breath, Petey studied the falls. Who? How what? Trevor asked. How? Ha? Fa? How Palisade Falls? Aye. Well, snow or rain drains into a river above, and the river goes over a cliff. Petey shook his head in disbelief, grunting something to Calvin. Petey says it's not winter and it's not raining, so that can't be, Calvin grinned, showing his missing teeth. Trevor gave up explaining and turned to Calvin. So how did you lose your front teeth? Calvin blushed. I ran my wheelchair into a curb watching some pretty girls. Everybody laughed. You have to be careful around pretty girls, Shauna said. We're trying, Trevor said, winking at Petey. On the footbridge, straddling the churning froth, everyone sat spellbound. The misty air breathed magic, except for an occasional, oh boy, oh boy, Petey and Calvin sat silently, lost in memories. The sun had slipped low over the mountain peaks by the time the group worked their way back down the steep incline and returned to the van. Calvin dozed as they drove the winding road toward town, but Petey lay awake, a worried look greasing his forehead. What's wrong, Petey? asked Trevor. Petey refused to answer. Little more than halfway to town, Trevor discovered what had bothered Petey. A foul odor filled the van. Do you need changing, Trevor asked? Petey shook his head. No. Soon the smell became unbearable, even with the windows open. Petey, I'm sure you need changing, Trevor said. Petey avoided Trevor's eyes. Suddenly, Trevor realized the reason for Petey's behavior. Boyd, please stop the van, he said. Boyd gladly pulled to a stop, and everyone bailed out for fresh air. Petey stared at Trevor, then over at Shauna, concern wrinkling his forehead. Shauna, will you walk Calvin down the road a little ways until we're finished? Trevor asked. Sure, said Shauna. Boyd helped Trevor lift Petey from his wheelchair. They used the rear bed of the van for changing. Have you ever done this before, Boyd asked. It's no big deal. It's like changing a baby, Trevor said, not admitting he had never done that either. How well do your parents know, Petey? Boyd asked. Trevor chuckled. They'd be having little batches of rabbits if they knew what I was doing right now. It's good learning to care for the elderly, said Boyd, as they returned Petey to his wheelchair. Someday this will be us. Finishing, Trevor pushed, uh, pulled a clean sheet over Petey. Petey, were you afraid Shauna would see you change? Aye, aye, Petey exclaimed wildly. I'll never let that happen, okay? Again, Petey nodded. Sa, you, ooh, sa, ooh. All aboard, Boyd shouted, and soon they were headed toward Bozeman. Calvin, Petey, and Trevor fell quickly into deep, relaxed sleep, exhausted by their adventure. They slept until the van pulled into Bozeman Nursing Home. Trevor awoke with a start, realizing he had been leaning against Shauna. Embarrassed, he sat upright. Boyd looked back with a smile. Did you party? Did you all party last night? Petey and Calvin smiled mischievously. I better head home, said Shauna. Thanks for coming along, Trevor said. Shauna flashed a smile. Anytime. Goodbye, everyone. After Shauna left, Trevor rolled Petey inside. Where will Calvin be staying? Boyd asked. Uh, isn't he staying with you? Trevor asked. Boyd shook his head. My friends have a small apartment. I thought this was something you had arranged. Maybe he can stay here, Trevor said, heading for the nursing desk. Soon he returned, shaking his head. They said Calvin can't stay here because there's no room and residents can't have guests. So what are you going to do, Boyd asked, his voice making it clear that this was Trevor's responsibility. He can stay at my place, Trevor said suddenly. Is that okay with your parents, Boyd asked? We'll find out. It's easier to ask forgiveness than permission. In five minutes, they'd unloaded Calvin beside Trevor's house. 
As Boyd drove off, Trevor's mom came out the front door. She stared at Calvin. Trevor, what are you doing? Who is this? This is Petey's friend that I told you about. Why is he here? Calvin is spending the night. Oh, honey, I know you mean well, but we can't keep him here. Calvin's eyes clouded with fear. Nobody wants me, he blurted. We have plenty of room, Trevor said strongly, pushing Calvin past his mother and into the house. I'll take care of everything. Trevor pulled couches together to make a double bed in the living room. His parents gave him accusing stares and made artificial conversation, then went to bed a full hour early. Trevor decided to start a fire in the fireplace. Watching the flames, Calvin smiled broadly. This is the nicest place I've ever been in my life. He leaned back against the cushions in bliss. As the evening wore on, Calvin talked more. Each time he answered questions, he wrinkled his forehead and scratched his head. Sometimes he cradled his head in his hands side to side. Clearing his throat loudly, Calvin voiced his opinion with an air of importance. At times, Calvin spoke in a whisper as if telling secrets. He talked about a world unlike anything Trevor had ever imagined, a world of crazy people, walls, and screaming. He talked about Joe and Cassie and some of the people at Warm Springs who had been close to him and Petey. He told stories, some funny, some tragic. As he spoke, Calvin eyed a, big, a large black teddy bear resting beside Trevor on the couch. Trevor had won years before at a carnival. Without saying anything, Trevor picked up the bear and set it on Calvin's lap. Calvin pulled it in tightly, rubbing his cheek with the soft hair. You know, Trevor, I always wanted a teddy bear. I saw pictures of them, but I never saw a real one. Well, would you like this one? Calvin blushed. I'm too old now. I want you to have it. A proud look crossed Calvin's face. He held the teddy bear at arm's length and examined it. I'll take good care of it, he promised, hugging the furry toy to his chest. I know you will, Trevor said. He yawned and stood. It's midnight and I'm beat. Do you need help getting ready for bed? No, I do things by myself. Just shut the lights out. I don't need light. Okay, good night. Good night. Trevor went upstairs to his bedroom. For a long time, he heard bumping and movement downstairs, but eventually he fell into a sound and welcome sleep.